Hello, welcome to the Aquarium Online Academy. My name is James. I'm one of our educators here at the Aquarium of the Pacific down in Long Beach, California. We're going to be exploring the octopus today. What do you know about octopus? What would you like to know about the octopus? Well, this is your opportunity because you get to ask questions during our live broadcasts. So while we're airing live this Friday morning at 10 o'clock, you can text us questions at 562 286 one eight three eight. Now I'll say it again, real, real slow, just to make sure you know. Five six two, two eight six, one eight three eight. Now, if you're one of our younger viewers, remember text rates apply. Make sure there's an adult that's around to help you out. Make sure you're allowed to text things. But you can ask us questions while we're airing, and that way we can help tailor what would you like to know about the octopus. Well, let's take a quick look, because we are scientists and observers. We all are together. Let's make some observations. Do you think octopus live here? Hmm. What do we see in our exhibit space? This is our tropical habitat. It's about 350,000 gallons. Do octopus live in the coral reef? We often talk about, hi. We often talk about octopus living in our local Pacific habitats here in the Eastern Pacific where it's kind of cold and it's a kelp forest. But are there tropical octopus? Is that an octopus? No. You wanna know how? Great joke I learned this morning. How many tickles does it take to tickle an octopus? Ten tickles! Get it? Tentacles? Well, I was laughing. I don't know if you're laughing or not. It's okay. You can laugh at me, not with me. I take it just all the same. All right. Look at our octopus. What characteristics does an octopus have that would determine where it lives? A coral reef or a kelp forest or maybe a deep sea habitat or even a tide pool? Hmm. Well, they live in the water, but do they have lungs like us? <gasps> we can take a big breath of air. And it might look sometimes like an octopus is breathing, but they have a different part in their body that helps them breathe. Mm. What do they breathe with? You're right, gills. Good job. So their gills are inside their body and they have to pull water into their body to get that oxygen from the water. So that means they have to stay underwater most of the time. They might be able to come out for a short while, just like we can hold our breath and dive underwater but they need to stay underwater. So, so far, this could be the habitat for an octopus. All right. What other special features do octopus have? Hmm. Sometimes they're kind of like little ocean ninjas. Smoke bomb, Psh, disappear. Could they do that in a coral reef habitat? Yeah, octopus like to hide. And if something finds them, well, they have a couple different ways that they can get away or hide better they can release ink, just like I pretended to do. They can also camouflage. They are some of the best color-changing animals on the planet. Fun fact, they don't see color like we do. We're not even quite sure how they match colors so effectively that they can match exactly what they're sitting next to, even if they can't see the colors like we experience. Now, if we had a brain like an octopus and eyes like an octopus, we'd totally understand, but we do not. Well, let's talk about more about their body and their special abilities. So when you look at an octopus, they're very cute. They have eyes right here. But what is this part? Is this their big head? They have a big giant brain, very smart, mm, plodding underwater. Mm, they are very smart. But this part here is called the mantle. This is kind of like our tummy. So if you were going to be like an octopus, first you'd have to double all your arms and legs. You need eight, right? And then you got to take them off and put them on your face. But at least space for your eyes, because you've got to be able to see. Just like that. That's the orientation of their body. So their legs and arms, like ours would be, their appendages or arms are here. Their head is only this middle section. And then their body, like their abdomen or tummy, is right here. Well, let's take a look at one of our octopus that lives here at the aquarium. Harry is helping out with the pictures behind me. Alicia is on question control. This looks like a very fancy octopus. This is the giant Pacific octopus. Now this one does not live in a tropical habitat. There are tropical octopus. 
We had one, for, actually we still have one right now, called a day octopus. The day octopus is tropical, likes to be pretty active in the daytime, but most other octopods are nocturnal, or like to be in the dark. What do we observe happening with our octopus friend right here? What are those things sticking to that window? They're not on my little stuffed animal friend down here. Hmm, these are suction cups. Now, if you imagine an octopus testing how strong it is, just like, ooh, I can lift so many pounds of weight. Well, if we tested how strong an octopus would be, it'd actually be very strong. The giant Pacific octopus, I think in one suction cup, actually has the strength to hold up a standard bowling ball. One suction cup. Now, let's multiply that by over 200 suction cups per arm. Ooh, that's a lot of bowling balls. And they have eight arms. It's like 2,000 2, suction cups. Could you imagine playing a bowling game with an animal that can throw 2,000 bowling balls? Very challenging. Okay, but that's a very strong animal. Now, smaller octopus, probably not as strong as this one, but they're still very strong because of the food that they have to eat. So what would an octopus want to eat? Well, we probably got to talk about their mouth, too, if we're going to talk about what they eat. Because if you know anything about what we teach here, form and function are important. Fingers do the things that we can do because of how they're shaped. Now, if I had webbing between my fingers, I'd probably be better at swimming than I am right now. Or, if my feet were really wide, I could kick faster in the water. So, how things look and how things function are really important to how animals survive. Well, the mouth of an octopus kind of looks like this. Ooh, close up. It's like a, actually looks like a bird's beak, which is exactly what we call it. It's a beak. This is one from a squid, a Humboldt squid. It's a model. But the Humboldt squid jaw is about the same size as a large giant Pacific octopus. That's a pretty big mouth. Now, this mouth is very powerful, just like their suction cups are very powerful. It needs to crunch and crush through their prey. So what would it eat that needs crunching or crushing? While you think about that, there's a very fun question that came in from Leah in Cerritos Elementary. Thank you for viewing. This is the first time I've ever been asked this question. I'm really excited. Is Ursula from Little Mermaid an octopus or a squid? Hmm, that's a good question. Think back about how many appendages it has. An octopus has eight. Now, I don't remember the last time I saw the movie Little Mermaid, so I don't remember how many tentacles or arms Ursula has. But their cousins, the cousin of the octopus, the squid, has two tentacles and eight arms. So they have a total of ten. So maybe they get ten tickles. <laughs> Anyways, so depends on what Ursula, Ursula's arm tentacle combination is. Now remember, Ursula's also kind of a magic living thing too, because it's a combination of human characteristics and a cephalopod. Hmm. So Ursula probably needs a new classification. Maybe you could help classify what parts of animals or what kinds of animals all the magical, mystical creatures would belong to. That's actually a fun project. Ah, I challenge you. So have you thought of crunchy, crawly things that an octopus might want to eat? Well, some of them crawl and some of them do not. Like these animals. This is a scallop. Very tasty. This is a clam. Also very tasty. Do these crawl around? Not really. If a hermit crab picked these up, it could crawl around. Maybe a hermit crab too. But the other animals that live on the seafloor, like uh, mussels, clams, scallops, uh, we even have things like an abalone. And this one doesn't crawl like with legs, but it does scooch around. And then this is a, a molt of the exoskeleton of a crab. So crabs are also another common food item for the octopus. They need big, strong jaws to crunch these open. Now, the other, other reason why those tentacles need to be so strong, or those arms, is because how they grab their food. So if you're a squid, you have to grab your food with two long tentacles, grab it, munch on it. If you're an octopus, all of your arms have about the same amount of strength and suction cupping. So if there's an animal with two shells that stays closed, you have to be able to 
pry it open. And with their very strong tentacles and arms, cephalopods can pry things open really well. So the strength of the arm of an octopus can open shells and then they can crack them open and chew on the shell and get the food out. So they are very well adapted at feeding on some of these interesting animals. Now we had a great question come in about the ink of an animal. Why would they need to squirt ink? Oh, both are from Barton Elementary, fourth grade group uh, from Miss Colbert's class or Colbert's class. Thank you for tuning in. So why would an octopus need to squirt ink? Now, on our computer, I think there's a video of an octopus squirting ink. Let's see if Carrie can pull that up while we think about why would you need to have a cloud of ink suddenly show up around you? Besides being one of the best magicians you could be in the ocean, what's the advantage? Now, this one's hiding in a tight little space. So being able to squish down and hide is great. But what if something finds you while you're hiding? or something startles you and you don't realize that you need to now escape your hiding spot and get away. Imagine playing hide and seek with your friends and they find you, but instead of being like, oh darn, you tagged me, I'm in. Smoke bomb, Psh, bye bye. That's a great adaptation. If you could kind of squirt out a cloud of something that hides you and you can disappear, or maybe the ink even gets stuck to the animals that are trying to grab it, and it kind of gets all over their gills or mouth. Sometimes their ink is really mucusy and gummy, and it can block whatever they're doing, and now they're more focused about getting something off of them. Like if we threw slime on a predator's face, they would be, oh, that's disgusting. Maybe they're not as interested in you. So that would be why they can squirt ink, is they can be uh, more adapted and getting away from potential predators. Now, the question about their eyes, are they colorblind? That's a really good question because, uh, because, I was waiting for Alicia to say something, because their, their eyes can see color but not really experience color like we do. So their eyes, look at this eye. We have round pupils. So one of the cool things about animal eyes is the taller the animal stands on land, more round the eye the pupil gets. It allows us to see differently. And our eyes both point forward, so we get uh, what's called binocular vision, so we can get depth perception. Try walking around with one eye around your house, color, cover one up, you can't quite tell how far things are from you. But if your eyes are kind of to the side, like an octopus, and you have a flattened pupil in the ocean, this helps the octopus like a prism does when we shine light through it, it separates the light into different wavelengths. So that is how their eyes work. Now they don't have the cone cells in the back of their retina like we do. So here's their eye, really close up. They don't have the same kinds of cells that per perceive or receive the color or the movement like we do, but they do have the ability to see very well, which is why scientists are still unsure as to why they can match color so well because they don't have the cells that see the same colors but their brain can still match those colors very well so our brains are the ones that are interpreting everything our eyes just see whatever's in front of us right so my eyes receive the image but my brain is telling me you know what that's your right hand you're holding it up yep that's me so our brains are helping to fill in the information our eyes are just the cameras that collect it. So their eyes are collecting that information, but their brains are doing a lot of the power behind figuring out what's around them. Now, Concha is asking, do octopus eat crab? Yes, they are going to eat lots of crabs. In fact, we feed crab to our octopus here. Not a live one, we usually get a frozen whole crab and we can give that to our octopus. Now the crabs that we can give them, we sometimes make it a challenge to get to. Imagine if we put your lunch in a locked, lunchbox and you had to figure out the combination get it open before you could eat well it might seem kind of mean to us but for an octopus they need a puzzle they need something to work on because just like you or i if we get bored we get a little mischievous i know i do so here's our crab that's been thawed out it's sitting in just a little plastic boat now let's watch godzilla our octopus figure out what's going on now we also rub some of the food on the bottom of the boat because they can taste what's in the water or smell. So taste and smell in an octopus is the same thing. 
Oh, looks like Godzilla's figured out what's going on. Oh, they taste crab on the outside of this boat. I must investigate further and figure out, is there food in the boat? Let's find out what Godzilla decides to do. Now, octopus don't eat plastic boats. So she's going to get rid of the boat, but eat all of the crab underneath. The other cool thing is while she's eating, she'll color change and she'll actually disappear. She'll go hide in part of the exhibit to finish her meal without anybody watching her. See, there's the boat. I'm watching my, my, my TVs over here. There's the boat. Weather person control. There we go. She changes color and then she goes and hides in one of the corners and finishes her meal. So they do eat lots of different kinds of crabs or other arthropods, the things with jointed legs and exoskeletons and creepy crawlies of the ocean. Okay. Danica from Moor Park School District, welcome Danica, is asking, how big do they get? Big. Giant Pacific octopus can get, I think, 12 to 16 feet wide when they're just like not even really stretching their tentacles out and over 100 pounds. That's a big octopus. A lot of other octopus stay just this big. So the, the uh, red octopus we've had and our two-spot octopus we've had, they get about the same size. They only get about this big, not too big. But a giant Pacific octopus is the biggest of all octopus species, and it gets really, really large. Uh, how smart are they was the question that came in. I don't know how you classify that because they don't like to hold pencils. As strong as their suction cups are, they can't take a test. Now, we can assess intelligence in lots of different ways. We, as scientists and observers, you too, we can watch what's going on around us. When we observe animals playing, interacting, communicating, either verbally or non-verbally, so color changes are non-verbal. They're not saying, red, 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 red. No, they're just making the color red. So communication styles, social hierarchies, or how they interact with other members of the same species, that can all tell you a lot about how smart something is. So let's think of another organism that we might observe. Like, do you have a pet dog or cat or gerbil in your home? If you watch them for a little while, what would they start to do? Now, if it was my cat, he's not sleeping. He would come and investigate what I'm doing. So we're part of the same family group. He's curious what I'm interested in and what I'm doing, and I'm curious what he's doing. So that's a part of an intelligence that we can measure. Now, my cat does like to play. He doesn't fetch very well, but he will chase things. Okay, so play type is an important part of intelligence. Now, fantastically, I have taught my cat how to sit. He is still working on not screaming at me. But when he wants something, he communicates with me. Cats have figured out how to meow at us to tell us things. Cats don't really meow at each other. They meow at us, like, food. My water bowl is almost empty. Why are you in my spot? They're communicating. So there's levels of intelligence. Now, the more that they can do that, the more uh, complex that can be, the higher their intelligence. Now, we know octopus are extremely smart, the smartest of all the invertebrates, because of the puzzles they can solve, the way that they can learn, and the things that they do in their environment. Now, the cool thing is scientists really want to know more about them. So what they've done is one of the experiments they did is they put an octopus in one tank, and then there was a divider, it's clear. They put in one in, over here. Well, in this one, they put food in a tube, and it was a clear tube, so the octopus was like, oh, what's this force field? Mm. And figured out to reach in and grab the food out. The other octopus was watching the whole time going, interesting, I see. They did the same test. They put the food in the tube to the other octopus, and he's like, ah, you had to try hard the first time. I know exactly what you're doing. They can learn from each other by watching. That's a really big form of intelligence. So we know they should be very, very smart. Now, Concha also asked, who are the octopus's predators? Ooh, very interesting. If they're so smart, they're so good at hiding, what would try to eat an octopus? Let's think of things that might have big enough teeth and are also pretty smart that could find an octopus and eat it. This one's kind of challenging because there could be a lot of animals that fall into this category. Well, one of the ones we commonly see here in California are seals and sea lions. Sea lions will find and eat octopus. That seems like an interesting battle because the sea lion has really good vision, much more like ours, 
very good hearing, but they can only hold their breath for so long. So a sea lion has to be able to find the octopus, get the octopus, and take it back to the surface and eat it before they hold their breath for too long and then need to go back up for air without getting any octopus from their hunting excursion. So that's a possibility. There's also other animals in the ocean that might find and eat octopus too. Other fish might do it. Actually, other octopus might eat each other. Now, in the ocean world, and in most of the animal world, the same kind of animal might eat another one. And that happens a lot, especially in the ocean. Fish eat other fish. Well, some octopus eat other smaller octopus. Jellies eat other jellies. It's actually a pretty normal thing in the ocean. So there's only a few of the predators. There's quite a bit more we could list, but we do have some more questions coming in. So let's make sure that we can get to them too. Now, if you are curious, you can always email us some questions at live, L-I-V-E, at L-B-A-O-P, Long Beach Aquarium of Pacific org. Live at L-B-A-O-P dot org. We can answer even more questions for you if you're really, really curious or you need a bigger answer than we can provide on the air. Now, if you're just joining, remember, you can text us at 562-951. That's the wrong one. 562-286-1838. And you can text us questions. You can't text that other number because that, that one can't take text. All right. Caleb is asking, I think their favorite food is crab. Is that true? It is a pretty big favorite of theirs. They love things that have shells. They love to eat those animals because once they catch them, they can't really swim away. If they caught them and they can't crawl away or they can't dig themselves back into the sand, it's much easier to hold on to that prey item. So good job, Caleb. Great guess figuring out what are, their, what are some of their favorite food items. Let's keep taking a look at some more images or videos we have that Carrie can show off about octopus here at the aquarium. Now, one of the cool things, oh, here we go. Here's some color changing abilities. Oh, you found me. I'm going to very slyly sneak away. You can't tell I'm doing it. Bye-bye. bye So real quick, that's also how fast. This is not sped up. This is exactly how fast they can color change. So they have tiny little cells in their skin that are like little windows with pigment in them. So you imagine, oh, here's the reverse. Oh, I'm going to try and hide in this one thing. You're not going to know I disappeared. And... Whoa, that was very, very quick. Now, the other thing we noticed, I noticed it. Did you notice it? their skin change tex texture too. So they can change the texture of their skin into whatever surface that they're trying to pretend to be on. Now our skin can't quite do that very well. We have little tiny muscles connected to each one of our little hairs. So when you get goosebumps, it's a little muscle tugging on your hair because you're like, ah, I'm cold or ah, I'm scared. And you get these little tiny goosebumps. That's as much texture difference as we can get. And very, very, very few people can control it automatically. An octopus can change the texture to just about anything they're sitting near or on and copy or mimic that. Uh, more questions from Barton Elementary. How do octopus take care of their young? That is a good question because not all animals do the same thing. Mammals and birds take care of their young for quite a while and then the babies leave and go off on their own. Some animals, like salmon, do what's called broadcast spawning. So they will release sperm and egg in the water and they meet and then they can make babies, but the salmon have already often passed away. Unfortunately, a very similar thing happens to octopus. So a male and a female octopus will mate. The female octopus will lay her eggs and she'll guard them. Guard them as long as she can until almost the point where the eggs hatch. But she has not ventured away to get food for so long. She has essentially starved herself and at that point she'll start to pass away. That might seem really sad for us, but that is part of the natural order of things in the ocean. The more babies you have at once, the less care you provide. The less babies you can have, the more care you can provide. There's a lot of energy involved in both of these. Anybody that has kids out there, any of our parent viewers, you kind of understand, right? Too tired? Man, that's tough. So if you had, oh, I don't know, a million eggs, it's hard to take care of a million eggs. If you had one egg, yeah, very different. So an octopus has a lot of young and they can't take care of all of them. So they wait until they hatch and then they're kind of on their own from there. Now, a really cool question about can they fight sharks? They are ocean ninjas, but they're not so good at fighting the sharks. Sometimes sharks and rays might find them and want to eat them too. Now, in terms of fighting, they probably can defend themselves pretty well. Remember the ink? Blah. They can shoot out the ink and it's got mucusy go gooiness to it. Well, if you're a fish that breathes with gills and that gets stuck on your gills or your face, it's going to be hard to breathe. You're going to have to try and clear that mucus out. 
just like we have to try and cough and clear our lungs out, well, that's going to be kind of tough for an animal. Now, the other thing is octopus have a venomous bite. Very rarely told fact is that they are all venomous. So if you've ever heard of the blue ringed octopus, that's not this one. This is the two spot octopus. The blue ringed octopus is not a toxic to touch like toads and poison frogs. It's dangerous because if it bites you, the venom could hurt you or potentially kill you. So if they bit something, it'd be even more painful than the fact that they're biting you with something that looks like a bird beak, massive parrot beak, but it's also going to have venom. Ooh, that's going to be painful. Now, do octopus, uh, <laughs> do octopus play video games? I would not want to play an octopus in a video game because if they have eight arms, that's like at least four controllers, right? They could play an entire team on a video game. That's not fair. But they're very smart. So if you're thinking about can they learn, can they, can they copy things that they see, they can. That's the cool thing about the octopus is they are smart enough for as small as their brain is. So we used to think big brains mean very smart. Small brains mean, oh, you're, you're not very smart. Well, it turns out it's the number of connections in your brain. It's the number of nerve cells that are connecting to each other that can communicate in specific ways. They have a lot of connections, so they're very smart. When we learn things, like we're learning now, we're talking with each other about all these fun facts about octopus, we are increasing our connections. This is why it's so important to continue learning and to try new things and to do new things. Because even if you don't like it, you tried it the first time, you've made new nerve connections in your brain and you're learning as you go. And that keeps our brains very active, which is really important as we get older. So make sure you stay in a position where you can learn and have fun every day to make sure you keep your brains really active like an octopus. Now, two spot octopuses are called that because they have a spot like here and here. So remember, it's kind of like on their abdomen-ish areas. So they have spots on the side, but what does this look like to you? Now, it kind of looks like a dartboard with, you know, concentric rings. But what else kind of looks like this? If you said eyes, you're correct. These are false eye spots. Now, even though they can color change and blend in really well, if the, something sees them in their natural coloring, but they have eye spots, false eye spots, they can confuse a predator as to where the face really is or even how big they are. So some animals have false eye spots that are so big, if it were a predator or a prey, you might be confused. I'm not sure what exactly that is because the eyes are too big for what it is. So false eye spots are another great form of camouflage that a lot of animals employ to be able to confuse predators and prey. Well, we've just about run out of time. Is there any last minute questions coming in? No? Okay, well, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your Friday. Keep learning and having fun and enjoy your weekend and join us back on Monday for more of our Aquarium Online Academy where we're going to get to have some more fun learning with all of you out there in the virtual space. Thank you so much for joining us and enjoy the rest of your Friday afternoon.